In California, where there's smoke, there's a fun. We're here to make sure there's no smoking going on in your place of business. Make sure you check inside. And these are the zealous Los Angeles smoking police. Have you had any trouble with people smoking inside? Uh, no. no. If one of your patrons is caught lighting up, these two can close you down. We have the option of writing an individual citation to the person smoking, as well as taking the owner of the establishment to court for allowing it. Have you ever had any hostility? A few times. A few times. Yeah. In the state's fight against secondhand smoke, smoking is now outlawed pretty much everywhere. In fact, about the only place you can legally smoke indoors is the family home. Don't make the mistake of believing California's tobacco restrictions apply only indoors. They've also taken a heavy hand to those who smoke outdoors. The latest ban applies to children's playgrounds. Not only can't you smoke in them, you have to be at least eight metres away before you can legally light up. California was ahead of, uh, ahead of the world. Uh, they were very brave. But California's always been that way. You know, California went out on a limb. Um, and look what's happened. They've made a difference? Oh, sure it's made a difference. Tremendous difference. Uh, and if you and Victor De Noble helped make that difference work, in California. In the Nine years ago, he blew the whistle on his employer, tobacco giant Philip Morris. Did these studies that you did also indicate that nicotine has a potential for drug liability? Uh, yes, if you find it in an animal, it has the potential to be a drug of abuse in, in humans. He was employed there as a scientist and was the first insider to expose Big Tobacco's lies. A smoker takes smoke into his lung and nicotine is immediately going to the lung and immediately getting to the brain. You know, if, if, if a cigarette was invented today, it would never reach the market. There's no way that one could, could take a product and say, I'm, I'm going to put this on the market. It's got 4,000 plus chemicals in it. It's got 50 chemicals that are going to cause cancer. It's got chemicals that are going to cause heart disease. And by the way, it's going to addict you. And you're going to spend the next 35 years of your life trying to quit. You want what? <laughs> <laughs> it's unlikely to happen today. Yeah, it would never happen. Right where that hole is, that's called the third ventricle. That's where the nicotine goes in there. Today, De Noble's at West Campus High in the Californian capital, Sacramento, part of his mission to kill off big tobacco. It causes the heart to beat real fast. He believes the only way to do that is to encourage kids not to smoke. And every year he tells his horror stories to at least half a million people. If you theoretically could stop everybody, everybody from smoking, taking up this addictive behavior today, in 35 years, the tobacco industry would be out of business because that's when all the smokers who are currently smoking today would die. So they would be out of business. So that's why they're so upset with me when I talk to kids. The tobacco industry doesn't care when I talk to adults. The two things they don't want me doing, they don't want me talking to kids and they don't want me talking to, the, to legislators. There were many individuals who said it just couldn't be done and we've proven them wrong. For the past 14 years, Californian legislators have been waging a war against tobacco with considerable success. There is now a decrease of 60 percent in our cigarette consumption use here in California. Diana Bonter is the director of California's Department of Health. Has the word smoker become a dirty word? It has uh, become uh, certainly a, a social taboo to smoke now. Okay, this is a breeding ground for the new smoker. Now, the Californian legislators haven't simply introduced smoking bans. They back them up with ads like this, ads that have irate tobacco executives reaching for a cigarette and their lawyers. In a few years, this group, pack a day, you watch. Two of America's largest tobacco companies were so offended that earlier this year, they actually sued the state of California for defamation. And the tobacco industry knows that the more nicotine their cigarettes have, the more hooked you'll be. Aren't these ads just really about trying to stop people from smoking? No. Steve Watson is an executive with tobacco giant Lorillard. 
one of the companies taking California to court. They're about trying to vilify tobacco companies in hopes that we will lose lawsuits and ultimately have to go out of business. Well, in a number of the different ads uh, that we presented as evidence portray uh, actors to be tobacco executives and claiming that uh, uh, we need to uh, hook kids to be, uh, become smokers in order to survive and make profit. And that's simply not true. And it's unfair and it's, and it's wrong to suggest such a thing. Boy, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, my, my opinion is, is, is if you're an executive and, you, and you're working for a tobacco industry, you're making your living and you very well know that you are causing physical harm and damage to people. Well, guess what? If you're not man enough or woman enough to stand up there and have, have me say that to you, then you better get out of the business. The truth hurts. We have to sell cigarettes to your kids. We need half a million new smokers a year just to stay in business. I'm surprised that you are I'm told, still in denial. I, well, the point is this, as long as it's a legal consumer product, people can make their own ch free choices of whether they want to use the product, period. And that kids should never smoke. So let's agree on that accommodation. Absolutely. But if children should never smoke, and we agree on that, then would you agree then that the future of tobacco would be very limited? Yes, I think there would be less smokers. We accept that. Thank you. For more than 40 years, tobacco executives have denied that smoking is harmful. They've said that nicotine is not addictive. They've even denied the dangers of secondhand smoke. Do you believe it's bad for us? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Are sure, you? Surely you know. Do that. you know? Well, of course. Based I'm, on what? I'm, I'm, accept, I'm accepting that here in America, there are six major health organizations, including the Office of the Surgeon General, that says that secondhand smoke kills. Well, I'm, Is that not good enough? I'm, I'm pretty aware of most of the information that's out there. Do you not accept that 53,000 Americans die every year from secondhand smoke? Again, that's information that is better served by coming from the health community. Up until now, Big Tobacco's biggest brawls have been mainly with American legislators on a state-by-state -state basis. But come next year, they'll be fighting an entire nation. Norway will become the first country to introduce the same kind of smoking bans now seen in California. I am a Minister of Health. I have to look at what are the major risk factors for death, early death and, and illness in this country. And I wouldn't have done my job as a Minister of Health if I hadn't tightened the policy uh, against tobacco. Dagfin Hoybrotten hasn't found it easy to convince his fellow countrymen that these new laws are in their best interests. Uh, we know that uh, between seven and 8,000 Norwegians lose their lives because of tobacco every year. We know that in this country uh, more people die from uh, passive smoking than uh, are dying from uh, traffic accidents. It's a major problem in a country of 4.5 million people. Like in so many other countries, smoking is a habit that Norwegians have embraced with gusto. It's estimated that up to 45% of the population could be affected by the national ban, which means come this time next year, bars like this one should be smoke-free. Of course, it could also be customer-free. Think of the fact that in Norway, perhaps there are 20,000 bars and restaurants and pubs with perhaps some 100,000 uh, seats. Not one of them is left for the smokers. That's an uncompromising uh, uh, policy, which is, must come out of authoritarian minds. But Eric Nord, believe it or not, works for Norway's health department. He says his government has gone too far. So you see this as a big brother legislation. Absolutely. This is an unholy alliance between uh, over-eager, over-dedicated health workers and uh, people with a more religious, uh, puritanistic uh, background. Norwegians aren't allowed to smoke in the workplace or, for example, on public transport. It's not like they haven't had to curb their smoking before. This is where you, you go to have a drink and a smoke and to relax. That's why you actually go there. 
I was really concerned uh, when the legislation was taking place that that uh, might have a negative effect on our bar business especially, but uh, there has been no downturn in business at all. If the Norwegians are worried about personal freedom and profit, perhaps they should talk to Randy Paragari. He owns 10 bars and restaurants in Sacramento. So if smoking bans were bad for business, he'd be the first to know. What do customers say to you when the restrictions came in? Well, it was really overwhelmingly positive where people were excited about not having to go into a, into a bar or a restaurant and have uh, the irritation of the smoking. I've had a lot of people comment to me how the non-smoking uh, laws have helped them to cut down or quit. The state of California led the way. As a nation, Norway followed. And next year, Ireland will fall into line. Sweden's debating the issue. As for Australia, well, we're still a nation of inconsistencies. Every state has different laws. Boy, uh, you know, I'd love to see Australia be the second Norway. Um, that would be wonderful. Uh, I'd like to see the United States be the second Norway, but if we can't do it, definitely Australia. I, I, I would love to see the Australian government take a, a, a much stronger stand on, on, on this health issue. I, I really think the Australian government needs to, to step back, like the United States government, and say, money is important, but the health of our citizens is more important. While new laws may have cut back on where people can smoke, Big Tobacco wants you to remember. Cigarettes are still legal, it's still your choice, even if it kills you. Surely you recognise that if you were going to have common sense about your health, you would not smoke. That's your choice. Has it been your choice? Excuse me? Has it been your choice? My choice to smoke or not to smoke? That's a, cho that's a right that I do have. Do you smoke? I do not. For any particular reason? That's my choice. Do you recognise it's bad for you, do you? I do. And here's another blow for Big Tobacco. The US District Court has dismissed that action they took against the state of California. So it's now free to continue its aggressive anti-smoking campaign. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.